We're definitely not that far from Bethlehem. Jesus Christ lives inside of each and every one of those who believe in him. That we will not perish, but have eternal life. It's my prayer that God's grace will be upon each and every one of you today. Today is the day of St. Nicholas Day. I don't know if many of you know this, but many in Europe are celebrating today of St. Nicholas Day. And we know who eventually St. Nicholas in modern times it becomes by legend. And we're going to talk more just a little bit about St. Nicholas. But what is the miracle of Christmas today? That's what I want to talk to you about. The miracle of Christmas. What is the miracle of Christmas? I remember as a young boy, I uh, had a Christmas dream. When I, I grew up in the 70s, uh, if you, you can do math, I was born in 1971. So one of my favorite shows growing up was The Six Million Dollar Man. I loved that show. It was my favorite, that and a couple others, but you know, like The Incredible Hulk. You know, with Lou Ferrigno, not an animated version. But, but that was my favorite show. And I, I asked Santa for the Buy McMahon doll. You know, that's kind of like the size of a Barbie doll. Mm-hmm. And, and, and also the third season in the Bionic Man series where he fights Bigfoot. And I really wanted that Bigfoot doll. They came out with it. And, I, and would you know it, that I got it that year. I asked for it. And I played with it all year round. I don't remember what happened to those dolls. but Now, i got to tell you, though, in that third season, when the Bonnet Man is he is in the Army and his supervisors are out in the woods of California, Northern California doing some geological studies, and, and he spots something mysterious in the woods by, with his bionic eye, and, and he immediately runs after it, and, and it's Sasquatch. He gets an appearance of Sasquatch. And, and so he catches up with them, and they fight and he rips off Sasquatch's arm, which there was no blood and guts, but wires and machinery. He finds out that Sasquatch, Bigfoot, was a robot, bionic as he is. Mm-hmm. And Bigfoot is the protector of some space aliens who can bend time and space. And they were living in caves within the mountains there in California, Northern California. And it was a one, I was just enthralled by that show. And, and it kind of made me a curiosity. That's probably where I got my curiosity and love for all things Bigfoot. And, and hey, I'm a believer in Bigfoot, so uh, persecute me if you want. But is that the miracle of Christmas, of getting what you asked for under the Christmas tree? There's been many a times where growing up, I wished for different things under the Christmas tree. And I wrote Santa Claus letters, and I sent it off. I told my parents what I wanted from Santa, and I got what I asked for. There's many a times that happened. Is that the miracle of Christmas? Let's talk about St. Nicholas for just a moment. You know, Nicholas is venerated and veered as a saint uh, by the Catholic Church. Why is that? Well, he grew up in what's now the southern coast of modern Turkey and Patatara. And so he was a devout Christian. He was raised that way. And because of a plague, his parents were, uh, died from that. And so he was raised in the church, and he started doing what Christ taught the church. That is to sell what you own and give to the poor. His parents were quite wealthy, so he gave all his money away. Mm-hmm. And eventually, he made his way into the priesthood and became Bishop uh, of Mira there in, in southern Turkey. And, and so he became far and wide known as a saint, a person who loved to give those in, to those in need to help out children, and also sailors, and to bless sailors and ships Mm -hmm. on their journey. Mm -hmm. This was a time of under Roman Caesar Diocletian, and he vigorously persecuted anybody within Christianity. And so he was, St. Nicholas, imprisoned for his faith. As with many, majority of the prisons were filled with Christians and bishops, and and they were filled with devout people, and the robbers and the criminals were loose on the streets. He was exiled and sent to hard work, a labor camp. Eventually, he was released and even went to the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. But sadly, he passed away on December 6, 343. Mm-hmm. And his body was buried in his own church there. And so it's said that manna formed over his tomb. 
and all who touched it were healed. One story, though, about St. Nicholas, about his love for children and to be able to help out children, is one day in that town of Mira, had some Arabs uh, raiding the area from Crete came and they ended up uh, just totally decimating everything and broke into the church, St. Nicholas Church's church, and they stole everything, all, all the relics and everything they could, and they even stole children as, as slaves. One child, such a, his name was Basilios, uh, was taken, and he was taken to the emir, and he was in the emir's palace courts as a cupbearer for them in his service. Now, this boy's parents were greatly distraught, and they prayed, and they prayed, and they prayed, and it was on a following St. Nicholas Day, because ever since his death, the people started celebrating St. Nicholas Day on December 6th, mm. an anniversary of the death. And she was praying to the saint of St. Nicholas. And then suddenly, as she was praying, her son in the court of the emir has instantaneously, instantaneously, and miraculously, and magically vanished. And he appeared to St. Nicholas. And St. Nicholas took him and set him in his parents' halls, transporting him back down there, saving him. Is that the miracle of Christmas? Is it that we take the traditions from Santa Claus all the way back to St. Nicholas? Is that the miracle of Christmas? What is the miracle of Christmas today? Open up your Bibles to Luke chapter 1, mm -hmm. verse 26 through 38. This is the birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel the messenger of God to Nazareth, a town in Galilee to a virgin, a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, mm -hmm. a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mm -hmm. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary. You found favor with God. Wouldn't you be honored to have found favor with God? You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. Yes. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Amen. How can this be, Mary asked the angel. He says, I'm just a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Yes. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who is said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be to me fulfilled. And then the angel left her. Turn to Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 and 25. This is where Joseph accepts Jesus as his son. Mm -hmm. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had mind to divorce her quietly. But after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Mm -hmm. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said to the prophet. A virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him to do, and he took Mary home as his wife, but did not consummate the marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Amen. Now let's set the scene here. You have Mary, who is a young, probably 14-year-old girl, mm -hmm. pledged to be married, betrothed mm -hmm. to a man named Joseph, probably in his 30s. Mm -hmm. Now a typical 
way that the Jews did marriages back then was that a groom came to a bride's parents and offered up a dowry for the bride. And so and then a ceremony was set and it was an engagement ceremony. It was a covenant ceremony that they pledged to each other, be true to one another until after the wedding day when they were both joined together. And the wedding, it wasn't just what we have today, like a 20, 30 minute ceremony. It was a three day ceremony. Ceremony, a, a feast day, if you will, a time where celebration and feasting and merry. It was a wonderful time, but it was this was all set up in stages. Mm -hmm. So if one person broke that covenant of engagement, you would have to go through a legal process of divorce. Mm -hmm. Now, if a person was unfaithful, especially in that day and time, a woman was unfaithful. She could be ostracized or even executed by stoning, by public opinion, and they could literally kill her mm -hmm. in the town. Mm -hmm. Joseph was an honorable man. Once he found out that Mary was pregnant, he wanted to divorce her quietly. Mm -hmm. He wanted to do it secretly. He didn't want to expose her to public disgrace or even for her to be murdered. Mm -hmm. So that's when he decided to do that in his heart. To go ahead and do that because they had not consummated the marriage because they had not been formally married yet. They went through that engagement mm -hmm. ceremony and that's where they were at in that engagement process, that covenant. Mm -hmm. Now, let's look at Mary. Mary, she, an angel appears to her. What kind of greeting is greetings? You are highly favored of God. Mm -hmm. That's probably why the Catholic Church venerates her because she is one that was highly favored. Favored by God. Why? Mm -hmm. Because God found favor upon her. He found her to be worthy enough to bring forth his own self. He bring forth his son, Jesus, the word become flesh yes. to dwell among us. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not like Greek mythology where Zeus comes down and, and has sex with some woman and, mm -hmm. and he has Hercules or, or, or Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. No, this is a... Something that is real and spiritual in nature. Amen. And that God comes down and he talks, the angel talks to Mary and says that she is going to conceive within her. And the Holy Spirit is going to overshadow yes. her. Mm -hmm. Now, we got to stop right there. How can a virgin give birth? Mm -hmm. How can a virgin have a child? Mm -hmm. She knew no man. The, if you want to get scientific and technical about it, the sperm has not reached any egg because there was no sexual union with anyone. Mary had not been with any man. She was a virgin. Mm -hmm. Yet, she was to conceive a child. Mm -hmm. Now, even in, in virtual fertilization, which is the process of fertilization manually by combining the sperm and egg in a laboratory dish, mm -hmm. that didn't even happen. This is a miracle. Amen. This is something that's never happened. This is a creation event. Yes. Like the creation back in Genesis where God created man, mm -hmm. Adam, and Eve. Mm -hmm. When God created the earth and the cosmos and everything all around us, this is a creation event. Amen. That's right. Where God creates in something that is not there. That's right. It's already miraculous enough. The normal birth process. When, when, when you have that sperm and egg joining together and uh, there's it's conception and there's creation right there in the womb, that is miraculous enough. Amen. That's right. But then, to top it all off, she was a virgin. Mm -hmm. That's something totally miraculous. Now, the word here, I want to get into that, is overshadow. How was this to be done? The Holy Spirit would overshadow her. Mm-hmm. The word for overshadow is also linked with God's glory. Mm -hmm. Now picture this. God's glory overshadowed Mary. This is the same word. It's found in Exodus chapter 40, verse 34, mm -hmm. where it says, The cloud of covering covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled it. And even Moses could not even go into that tent mm -hmm. of meeting. With the Lord. It says, Moses cannot enter into a meeting because the cloud had settled on it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Now picture this. Where was, in a sense, Mary's tabernacle, her womb? Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. God had overshadowed anybody who saw God face to face. Father God, Yahweh God, would die. Right. If you saw him face to face, you would die right then and there. That's why Moses couldn't even go. If you went into the actual presence and glory of God, he would die. That's right. So, you have this overshadowing. It's the same in the Mount uh, Transfiguration New Testament where Jesus is up on the, uh, on the mountain and the disciples there and they see that, that Jesus is with with the Lord, and he says, while he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and the voice of the cloud said, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well. Please listen to him. Mm -hmm. That's the same word right there. It's a bright cloud of covering. Now picture this. Mary is literally enveloped by the glory, the Shekinah glory of God, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's with inside of her. The glory went inside of her womb. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not, we kind of pass over it uh, about the, the Holy Spirit conceived in her. How's that done? Mm -hmm. It's done by the glory of God. The Bible even says, does it not, that the fullness of God dwells inside Jesus. Yes. All of God's fullness. Yes. That means yes. all of God's right. essence, all of God's That's entity, right. his deity is inside yes. of Jesus. Amen. That's right. That's right. So that means... Even at conception here, even at that point where the Holy Spirit, the glory of God puts himself right there inside of her womb, Jesus, the word become flesh, that a miracle has happened, that God created something inside of the womb, mm -hmm. that Jesus, right then and there, the glory entered into Mary. Mm -hmm. That's something miraculous. Amen. And that is why that the scripture tells us that Joseph was not to have any relationship with her mm -hmm. until after Jesus was born. That's right. Now, we do read in the scriptures, he did, uh, Mary and Joseph did have had other children. Yes, amen. Jesus had brothers. That's right. But that didn't happen until later on. Amen. When Mary had Jesus, the glory of God with inside of her, the word become flesh, the very fullness of God, no union was there. None. Because she would be her wound was to remain holy Amen. until the birth. That's right. Is this the miracle of Christmas? Amen. Is this the miracle of Christmas? Mm -hmm. I dare, dare say so. Now, I'm reminded of another miracle that happened on Christmas. It's an earthly miracle, but a miracle nonetheless. In 1914, there was this famous truce of World War I. Let me set the scene for you. In World War I, you had, in France, you had, you had the no man's land, which was a, a vast stretch of desolate, bombed out land. And pretty much, if you were out in the open, you were mowed down with machine guns. And on either side of that stretch of land were deep seven foot trenches, probably about five foot wide, seven foot deep. And there was caves and tunnels all through there as well. But mainly the, the Allied forces and the German forces had trench, were stuck in trenches. And they're battling each other from the trenches. If you've ever seen the movie 1917, it kind of depicts that. About how it was and what life was like. In 1917, my great-grandfather, K.O. Pelfrey, Kearney Otho Pelfrey, was ser served in World War I with the Rainbow Division. In fact, he was gassed in his position, uh, probably chlorine gas. He had one lung burned out, and he always breathed heavily. I remember that he passed away when I was 15 years of old age, and I remember sitting there and watching him breathe hard, even as an old age. <clears throat> but he was gassed, one lung burned out. He was shot twice in the shoulder, probably as he tried to escape from that gas, and he was left for dead. Probably the lines were so fluid at the time, they were kind of crossing over and battling each other, and he was left for dead, and he was behind enemy lines. And he had crawled his way out to get back to his unit. Now, on 1914, on Christmas Eve, the miracle started when the Germans started singing Christmas carols. And then the Brits started singing Christmas carols back. And they start singing to each other in harmony and in parts, back and forth. And this started at 10 p.m. on Christmas Eve, 1914. And then on Christmas Day... They start hollowing to each other. They start talking to one another. They start blessing each other. Christmas wishes. And then someone got the idea of let's meet. 
And how it started, we don't, don't know who it started with, but they slowly came out and they met each other in the middle of no man's land. In fact, reports, I've even seen a picture of it. You can Google it up. There's Someone had happened to have some kind of ball, kind of like a soccer ball, threw it out there, and they started playing soccer right there in no man's land. One German even recounts that a Brit set up a kind of like a makeshift barber's chair, and for one cigarette, you could actually get your hair cut. But all allied and also German forces, they were all just peace. There was peace in the land at that time. Amen. They gave each other gifts. Back of that, all they had were, you know, smokes or they had food rations or whatever equipment they might have to give each other. But they gave each other gifts back and forth and exchanged them. And the, allied, the commands didn't like it, but it was with the everyday soldiers. And it's estimated that over 100,000 participated in this unsanctioned truce. Is that the miracle of Christmas? That it is a miracle. And that the, that's what Christmas is about, isn't it? Amen. Peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Amen, that's right. A time when all hostility should cease. We focus on what truly matters in life. To being human again. You know, those trenches were full of mud. Were full of rats. Full of body lice. My great-grandfather even said he had body lice. At, at almost trench foot. And that's where that expression comes from, trench foot, where, where your feet get so damp and you don't dry them off and they start to rot. Mm -hmm. It comes from World War I, living in the trenches. Mm -hmm. It's a horrible existence for anybody, either side. But is this the miracle of Christmas? No. It is a miracle. And there can be miracles. I believe in miracles. I believe that there's miracles every day in our life. That's right. That there's miracles and healing and all that happens. Yes. And it happens in our life every single day. But the true miracle of Christmas is not about St. Nicholas. It's not about Christmas trees. It's not about Santa Claus. It's not about what you get under the tree. It's not about your family and friends and loved ones. I know that's important. Yes. But the true Miracle of Christmas is about Jesus. Amen. The Word become flesh to make His dwelling among us. The tabernacle with us in our lives. John, I'll read that again. John 1.14, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us, and we have seen His glory. The glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Yes. Billy Graham said, about Christmas, he said, Jesus was born on the cross, darkening his pathway from the cradle to the cross. Jesus' purpose was to die. Yes. That is why Jesus came through Mary's womb. To die for us, yes. but also resurrect. Jesus came to this earth not to perform miracles as a show, but Jesus came for the cross. Amen. From the cradle to the cross. Yes. From the manger to Calvary. That is why Jesus came. And that, my friends, is the true miracle of Christmas. It's about Jesus. Nothing else. Everything else, actually, everything else falls short. Nothing else compares. That is a true miracle of Christmas. Jesus, the word become flesh from a virgin's womb. Yeah. Let us pray. Powerful, mighty God, we just ask that you just touch our lives right here and right now. Fill us full of your spirit, your power, your glory. Let us see this coming up weeks and days as we shop and we buy stuff and we prepare, mainly because, because of COVID virus, we're not shopping out in the stores we used to, but we're, we're busily buying online. We're going to eBay. We're going to Amazon. We're going to all different store sites. Just to find that perfect gift to be delivered. Lord, I pray that we don't get caught up in all of that, but we get caught up in you. That we experience you, Lord Jesus. That we are filled with your spirit. You are the miracle of Christmas. Come, Lord Jesus, in our lives. Change us forever. Make this Christmas special, more than it's ever been before. May your spirit descend upon us. During this horrible year of the COVID virus, may we see the miracle of you 
through it all of how you truly love us so much, so passionately, you gave us your son to die on the cross for our sins. So Lord, I pray that you be with each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 May God's grace, his mercy, his love, his profound presence be upon you this day.